to go, I will go alone. I'm talking solo trips, solo dinner dates, solo concerts. I am completely comfortable with pulling up and meeting people when I get there. Hey, what's up guys? It's your girl Sarah here and welcome back to the Chateau for another video. Before we jump into the video, you know we always have some business to handle. If you are a returning subscriber, do not forget to give your girl a thumbs up at the end of the video if you want to see more content from me. And if you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. We thoroughly appreciate you and we welcome you. As you guys can probably tell from the title, we are starting a series where I break down some of the things that we talked about previously. More specifically in this particular series, my process of becoming her or my highest self. I know that there are plenty of short form content and we talked about this before, loads of short form content. I probably have someone, some on my TikTok or my Instagram that talks about becoming her. But for a person like me, a girl like me, I need step by step explanations of what the heck that even means. I do realize after going through the joint journey and making it to this point that it's so much more than just working out and becoming beautiful. There is some internal work that needs to be done and those are the things that I want to break down for you guys where I've come from and what I've already worked on and then I'm going to share the good the bad and the ugly uh, moving forward because there's still some work to be done we're going to start obviously at step one <laughs> well what I thought was step one I thought that my journey, and I've been saying all this time that my journey began in 2023. Well, honey, unbeknownst to me, through conversation, I actually discovered that it started in 2022. If you followed me previously and you saw my previous video where I broke down 22 and why it's my favorite number, and if you haven't, I'm going to tag it right here so that you guys can go back and take a look. It's actually pretty darn interesting, kind of freaky why the, that number is my favorite number. But either case, it is my favorite number. And in that year, I decided to do a little something for myself called the 2222 anniversary celebration. And during that celebration, I decided that on the 22nd of every single month, I would do something that I always wanted to do. And there was only one rule, just one, that I would do it alone. And that was a big deal for me because I come from a large family. I really enjoy being or I enjoyed being around lots of people. And I still do enjoy it sometimes now. But I enjoyed being around a lot of people. I enjoyed seeing my family happy. As a matter of fact, if you watch my previous videos, you know that too. I love new experiences and just simply doing things that we all can enjoy. And I always try to be the hostess with the mostest, especially if it's an event that I planned or if you come to my home or any of those things. I like to make sure everybody's happy. And I'm pretty sure you can relate to because who has things where they're not concerned about everyone's enjoyment? That was just a really really big thing for me I always want to see people happy and enjoying especially when it's something that I planned or I asked them to do I mean wouldn't it wasn't it a terrible feeling when you you're you hype a situation up or an event up and you go there and it's a bummer I don't like that but I say all of that to say I decided to do those things alone because they are things that I've always wanted to do and I wanted to give myself the opportunity to thoroughly enjoy them without the energy of anyone else just in case they didn't enjoy it and I would be concerned. And that's one of the things that I worked on during the journey, the impact that others energy has on me because I could be somewhere and I could be enjoying it thoroughly but if a friend or a family member that I brought with me is not enjoying it that energy will impact me and kind of bring me down a few notches and I don't want that especially for something as special as a 22 22 anniversary 
So I went through the year and I'm so proud of myself because I also have commitment issues and I give myself way, I gave myself way, I have to start talking in past tense. I gave myself way too much grace. If I didn't stick to it, it's okay, girl. As long as you're happy, we can keep going. That would be the pep talk I would give myself. But I'm actually very proud of myself because I did 12 celebrations. One other requirement wasn't a rule, but one other requirement or desire was that I wanted to blow out a candle at the end of each 2222 anniversary. That's right, candles aren't reserved for a birthday. They can be used anytime you light one. And so I made the decision that no matter where I went, what I did, a piece of cake that said happy anniversary with the candle on it was gonna come out to me and I was going to blow it out to celebrate or to close out that celebration. So that was step one. And that was, again, unbeknownst to me. I actually didn't discover it until I went to lunch with a new friend and I was telling her about the things that I did in 2022 and I described it to her. And then we shifted the conversation to my journey. And that's when I made the connection. So I'm thankful to her <laughs> for allowing me to have that conversation with her because that's where I discovered, you know what 2022 taught me? to go it alone because I don't know about you but for me the journey has been something that I've had to do alone I've had to do that in the absence of anyone else's energy as a matter of fact I don't know if you guys can see it but like I'm in my bedroom and right I don't know if you can see but right above my bed on my headboard there I can't remember exactly what it says but I'm just gonna loosely quote it it basically says that I want to enter this journey and reconnect with myself in the absence of anyone else's energy. And to me, that is so very important because your journey is yours and anyone else's energy impacting your decisions, how you feel. To be honest, if you're gonna allow that, it might as well be their journey. Whatever you need to do, you need to make sure it's for you. Cause at this point, it's like your move. It ain't. This ain't everybody else move. I did an Instagram and TikTok post on that because it is just so so important to my journey, and it could be to yours, and you just haven't discovered it yet. So again, I wanted to share with you that it is fairly important to figure out how to or to get comfortable with doing things alone because at the end of the day, the journey is yours. It's not ours. It's not everyone's all at the same time. It's not even, even if you're married, in my opinion, you know, the journey still is a singular thing that you can bring to the relationship. But I'm no expert. Don't listen to me, girl. It's just what I think works for me. Anyway, let's get into the real step two. So, you know, on my journey, and I will say this, loving yourself is like loving any other person in your life. You will have your good days and you will have your bad days. Sometimes me and me go together real bad. Other days, I just don't be feeling myself. But I'm never trying to exude fake confidence 24-7. That is not self-love. Self-love has its ups and its downs. And just like anybody else that you love, you're allowed to point out certain flaws within yourself and you're allowed to notice certain things that you want to change if you really want to see yourself grow. So don't feel like you're not on your self-love journey if you don't feel like you're 100% at your best right now. It's okay to notice the room and the space that you need to evolve in order to be better. Because if I'm in a relationship with anybody, I'm gonna make sure that I'm pushing them to be the best that they can be. Self-love is just committing to constantly understanding who you are. So in step two, after I went it alone and I successfully did that for the entire year, the 12 months out of 2022 and 2023, the burning desire with me to actually consciously evolve started within me and i decided that you know what we're going to kick off this evolution by taking inventory you guys know that you could never build anything on an unstable foundation and to me understanding who i am was the foundation that i needed to survey and make sure it was stable. And the way that I did that was to take inventory within. I sat down and I wrote down 
the things that I liked about myself, the things that I didn't like. I didn't spend too much time on the things that I actually liked because I liked them, right? The journey really was about evolving and changing the things that just didn't serve me, that I just did not like, and they just weren't working well for me anymore. So I sat down and I wrote down all of those things. And you in this scenario need to be very, very honest with yourself, very honest. What situations did you find yourself in that just did not serve you well? What conversations did you find yourself participating in and when you were done, you did not feel positive or you did not feel good? What relationships did you participate in or are you participating in that leave you feeling depleted, unhappy, just exhausted? What are those things? What relationships are you not participating in that could potentially fill you up and give you the energy that you need to evolve and live well? Are you consistently filling your, your cup spiritually? Are you consistently spending time with those who encourage you to accomplish your goals? Are the television shows you're watching, the songs you're listening to, the podcasts that you support, all of those things, do they support where you want to go mentally? Do you have routines that will get you to where you're trying to go physically and mentally? What bad habits do you have? And that's a tough one because no one wants to admit to bad habits, but what do your relationships look like from a romantic, a platonic, and a parental perspective? Are there things that you'd like to change there? And once you get the job that supports the lifestyle that you'd like to have, what are your work habits? Do you need to make changes there? Your spending habits. When you shop, how does it leave you feeling? Of course, you're happy to have the item, but the fact that the money is gone now, what impact does that have on your overall goal from a financial perspective? Are you actually having the meaningful life experiences that you want? Do you want to travel? Visually, are you presenting yourself to the world the way that you want to be seen? The way that you would want to see you if you were on the outside of yourself? And you're always going to be presented with some sort of negativity in the world that we live in. Do you like the way that you react to those negative experiences? How can you change them? How can you change your mind over so that your reaction is a little different? Do you have boundaries? What are those boundaries? And if you have none, should you have some? And to be honest with you, that's literally where step two began. Some other questions that I asked myself, and it's the question and the answer that I wrote out. Is your career serving you? Are you working the job that you would like to work? Are you living your dream? Are you putting energy day to day into the things that you love and things that re-energize you so that you can you feel like you are thoroughly enjoying life and you're living your life of purpose? All of those questions can help you arrive at essentially the things you need to work on. And in addition to identifying the things that I liked or disliked about myself, the things that I felt like I needed to change, I also did a little inventory of the people and the energies that I surround myself with because I knew that that had a huge impact on me, right? And I know a lot of people kind of frame it like, oh, you know, I'm going to be cutting people off this year. If you don't do this and you don't do that, it wasn't that simple. I really had to pay attention to how I felt when I was around certain people and how I felt when I left certain people. And when I did that inventory, I had to make some really, really hard decisions. Am I going to continue exposing myself to the, the negative impacts of this person's energy? And it may or may not be intentional sometimes people can have a negative they can be a negative influence and you not even realize it and that's why I speak to the energy right a person can always be a Debbie Downer always bring you their problems and their issues and that can have a deep impact on you as a matter of fact like most of my life my older sister Michelle would point out to me 
have to, you know, like be careful with dealing with this particular situation because it could give you anxiety. Sarah, you have to be careful with always trying to solve so-and-so's problems because it can give you anxiety. And In me being young and thinking, you know, I had my life all together, right? My life was amazing. Um, no, it doesn't impact me. I don't care. That was always my response. Like, uh, -uh it, it's no sweat off my back. It's no energy out of me. Baby, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell her, girl, you were right. Let me tell you, like, I don't necessarily suffer from anxiety, but, and I, I don't know, like, maybe I need to, to find out because maybe this is a form of anxiety, but when I constantly am met with other people's issues because I have the ability to like think really really fast um, there are some things that I've already experienced in life and I can tap into them and solve so many problems for other people as a matter of fact my job was essentially a problem solver um, you know we identify a problem figure out how to solve it and report on that constantly day in and day out I say all of that to say my sister was right that those energies those things they definitely stressed me over time to a point to a point where I changed my career I no longer wanted to do problem resolution right I never I, I no longer wanted to be presented with issues 24 7 seven days a week I didn't want to do it anymore it just wasn't a pleasant experience I no longer wanted to associate with or be friends with people who always presented me with their problems and never their own solution those things impacted me negatively and I'm not gonna say that I'll never ever allow myself um, to be in those situations or I'll never ever help someone during this journey Journey, I could not I needed all of my energy for myself so I think I beat that dead horse enough but just that inventory that inventory of friends family myself any of the any place that that negative energy was coming from I wanted to identify it thoroughly so that I could knock each one of those things off of the list and those were some of the things that I asked myself, but feel free to add on to it. You know what's going on in your life and you know some of the things that you wanna change for yourself. So ask yourself those hard questions and give yourself those hard answers so that you can work on it and evolve into becoming a better you. Thank you guys so much for hanging in here with me and joining me for this good discussion. I think it was a good one. I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. And I hope that you find some of the things that I did helpful for you on your journey. Anyway, next video, we'll talk about step three. I stripped myself of all distractions. And boy, was that a difficult one. And I can't wait to get into it with you all. Before you leave, don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me. And for those of you all who aren't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. The next one is going to be a good one. And you don't want to miss out. Bye. It's all about the end. for me. I can't think of a better way to use it. It's all about the antidote. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's all about the antidote. It's all about the antidote.